Baptists are just a bunch of old fuddy-duddies, right? I mean, come on, Baptists, get with the times. Let's go dancing. Why aren't Baptists allowed to dance? And allowed is probably the wrong word choice, because we all as Christians make choices every day as to the things that we will or won't do based on either scripture or on how it will affect the people around us. So the real question is, what does the Bible say about dancing? Now, if your argument for dancing is that the Bible doesn't explicitly forbid it, then congratulations, you are right, but with a slight caveat. The Bible doesn't forbid it, but it does provide examples that we can learn from. For example, in Exodus chapter 32, Israel's history takes a disappointing turn as they build an idol while Moses is away on the mountain. Do you, do you remember the story? Do you remember the golden calf? Their idol worship involved singing and dancing, and God himself called it corrupt behavior. The contrast of this is in Exodus chapter 15, verse 20, where Miriam dances joyfully to celebrate God's victory at the Red Sea. Do you remember 2 Samuel chapter 6, where David dances before the Lord in celebration of the Ark of the Covenant being returned to Jerusalem? The Bible says, and David danced before the Lord with all his might. So these examples help us to see both the potential for dancing to be used in a positive role in expressing worship and joy, but also to be misused and to be part of a corrupt and sensual behavior. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 reminds us that there is a time and a place for everything, including a time to dance. Psalm 149 verse 3 and, and Psalm 150 verse 4 highlight dancing as a valid and appropriate form of worship to God. All instances of dancing that are not explicitly condemned in the Bible are specifically connected to worship or praise to God. But that is where we need to draw the line. Because dancing that draws attention to yourself or your body, or dancing that is sensual in nature, there is clear biblical teaching in regards to that type of dancing as well. And it would be considered sinful based on a few very important passages. And I would guess that when you're confronted with dancing and culture as a choice for Christians to either participate in or to refrain from, it's probably this type of dancing that we are struggling with. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, Paul says, Now concerning the things wherever you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband, and let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Paul has been addressing in this passage fornication and how sensual sins affect the body. He had just said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 that we are not our own, that we are bought with a price because our bodies are the temple of God. Paul is acknowledging the powerful nature of human contact and sexuality. And so we can understand that for certain types of dancing, when the focus is on the movement of the body, when the purpose is to excite the senses, Paul is warning us against that type of entertainment. Paul goes on in 2 Timothy chapter 2 where he states, Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness and faith and charity and peace. Paul is encouraging Timothy to flee from sinful desires, including desires that would arise from sensual and arousing dancing. I would add that 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 provides great general guidance. If something seems potentially sinful, it's probably best to avoid. So ultimately, the Bible recognizes that dancing can be a positive expression of worship and of celebration, so long as it avoids temptation for yourself or for others and it is dancing of celebration and rejoicing. But the last time I checked, that's not the type of dancing that's happening down at the club.